Welcome, dear readers, to Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we only judge a book by its cover. And we find ourselves once more amid the towering stacks of... I mean, your library, yes, but I now have a card that declares that I am a junior librarian. That's absolutely correct. It's not exactly our library, It doesn't but... come with a lot of pay, though, but... Uh, so I've noticed, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I get by. I don't, I don't have much in the way of, of needs while I'm here. Mm. I have... Uh, well, especially uh, with the cafeteria catering to you and you not having to rely on uh, mm. bookworms anymore. Yeah, but with yeah. The, uh, it's, it's comfort with, food at this oh, point. Oh, yes. Well, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it's and it and it's nice to like keep in practice with uh, uh, with Guinevere. I I don't honestly see that much of the rest of the uh, uh, the raptors anymore. No. What's well, that? Well, so I had to shoo them away from their their constant attacks on uh, the novelization of Jurassic Park, the mm-hmm. uh, film based on the book. Yes. Um, and it just it it it's 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 created a bit of a gulf between us. And oh, that's well, such a shame. It, it is. It doesn't affect Guinevere though. She's still loyal and sweet. Yeah, okay. so she comes and she comes and visits, visit, but uh, uh, yeah, it's just it's, a bit of affectionate toe nipping. It's going to be hard for her as well, hmm. you know, when when someone is ejected from the uh, um, uh, from the social circle, and yes. then one person wants to stay friends with them. I appreciate that she makes the effort. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Well, it's good to good that you're still getting along nicely, and that everything is. Uh well in order with the pack and the herd, or what was it called again? Uh, the atrocity. The atrocity, that was yes, it. Yes, the atrocity of the Libraptor. Yes. So they've, uh, uh, I mean, they're essentially manning the uh, the visitor center that I constructed. Hmm. Have there been any visitors yet? Or is it, they're just going no, through the they, motions for now? They also play the visitors. Oh, they, they, they take turns. So they take turns, yes. Yeah, oh, very good. Yeah, like their theatricality. And uh, 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 I explained last time that they sort of resemble Smurfs in that yeah. they... Uh, take um, on a job and define themselves yes, through exactly. it. Yes, exactly. One affectation, yes. like there's, there's, there's one with a pair of sunglasses, and that's just... His thing, and there's and there's one that carries two cosmos as he's as he's waddling around. Oh, it's adorable. Yeah, yeah, I can see that, like with short little arms. Yeah, and exactly. Like, Where did they get the cranberry juice? The cafeteria. Oh, okay. Same mm-hmm. as everything else. Yeah, so, fair uh, enough. The cafeteria's got everything. I do miss it. I did feel a sense of pride uh, having having built that and, and shared that with them. But that's fine. They have uh, uh, they have their own thing, and I have mine now that I'm a junior librarian. So. Yes. Been spending a bit more time with the little librarianess. Oh, she's sweet. And it's a different kind of uh, affection from a from a cat than from a, a the library. Yes. It's much more uh, casual. It's much less destructive. Less bloodletting. Um, and she is warmer than I am. Oh, that's a nice change. Yeah. It's like rather than having those little heat leeches. I mean, yeah. I suppose I mean, it's in the summertime, it's like it's not going to it's going to be a little bit warmer here. Although the climate control, of course, should take care of the worst of it well it hasn't today and also i'm going uh, to give myself an extra challenge because um well i'm very proud to be a a, a junior librarian so mm-hmm. now i'm on a quest to find myself some tweed now tweed. i don't know much about weaving or textiles in general yeah. but i do believe it's a type of wool i think so yes so among the, the 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 rather unusual food chain that you have going on in this library and not a lot of libraries honestly have like an ecosystem yeah, well, oh except know. for that one in Portugal that has bats bats in the well no that's belfry not bats in the library no. <laughs> it's like uh, it's... no but they maintain a population of bats oh. inside the library to take care of the moths oh i suppose that makes sense yeah. and then they just deal with the guano every yeah. uh, uh, well, every morning like scrape it off the shelves i suppose and... well get it while it's wet but so do you have any advice for for anything that i could Maybe herd and sheer. Like I don't mind long-term projects of no, I'm uh, to making my own. I mean, I don't have any, we don't keep any sheep here, so that's no. I hadn't. I hadn't. I hadn't seen any. No. Um. I mean, you could go for. I don't know. Maybe the if you find the nesting, the the, the places where the uh, the bookworms cocoon themselves, <gasps> you can just like go silk moth on them. That oh, might work. Oh, I imagine that those like burrows would be would be well defended. They're bookworms are not that intelligent. No. So I've tried looking behind the bookshelves that are up against oh, the wall or in between the ones quest. that are back to back. And then like, well, you know how they do, which is like get a big pot of boiling water and then you just like chuck the cocoons in. So it it, it will take a lot of fucking bookworm cocoons in yes. order to produce. It would uh, be good. I mean, it's like you'd be doing the library a service. Uh, and and I'm, as, as a junior librarian, yeah. I'm, I'm proud to be of service to my library. Is it going to result in tweed, though? Because silk is a very fine fabric, and that's cool for, like, a senior librarian. But as a junior, I feel like I should I should dress the part. So tweed, like the elbow patches, mm. I'm really looking forward to those. Uh, yes. Well, it's the one thing that I can think of. There's not much in the way of big animals here that you can... I mean, you can, like... Try combing out a little librarianess and like spinning oh, her fur in shedding. Yes, yes, that's a great idea. Spinning her fur into something that would more resemble wool. Yeah, bloody warm though. Okay, I'm I'll just, just not a husky, to... but it's. 
<laughs> she's she is in the shedding phase where you can give her a little fright and she runs away and like this like this cloud of uh, cat shaped hair is still uh, yeah. maintains behind and it'll yeah I suppose that like the the, the Velabra raptors maybe collect it and use it for nesting material. Oh, I haven't seen that happen yet. Mm, well, maybe, have it you might been, be have, seasonal. Have you, yeah, yeah, I suppose when it's like when it's breeding season, they line their nests with that. Maybe that's that's an idea. I mean, if you find their nesting grounds, then there would probably be enough left from previous years. That... Yeah, but also I think that would be a, a bit of a faux pas since we're already kind of on 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 yeah. thin ice with well, the, like walking in on their on their nests, right? Still just just offering suggestions. I appreciate that, but I want you to sort of imagine um, like telling someone that they're not welcome and then. And, you know, you close the door and you turn around and then they're sort of still in your house looming over your baby. That's kind of the experience. <laughs> well, yes. It's like you ask them to, like, get out and you close the door. They wave off and then you turn around and they're still there for some, yeah, by some reason. Yeah, just peering in your baby's crib. So I'm going to uh, – thank you for the suggestion. Mm. I'm going to uh, take that under advisement. Yes. Well, let me know how it comes along with the um – with a silk, if you try, tr- do try to go that route. It'll take ah, I get it. Yeah, uh, I thought it was a very good yeah. joke. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what about, we haven't talked about vegetable matter. I mean, yeah. uh, the, the reflecting pool, or as we should, as we'd call it, the duck memorial, mm. where we reflect upon the yes. atrocity that, that took place there that uh, uh, you've already forgiven me for. But, so what about, like, flax? Do oh. we have any uh. of those? Because I did hmm. notice some some some, like... Uh, papyrus-like substances in your in your book repair studio. I have that brought in though. Ah, it's okay, like, yeah. that's unfortunate. It's even better idea, hemp. Although yeah. I only have sweet hemp growing, not the. the Wait, what's the difference? What's sweet hemp? The, the smoking kind. Uh, oh, it's still oh, hemp, oh, oh, but like yeah. the fibers aren't as long. So, it's like, I mean, I suppose it will still work, but well, like you know, the fibrous hemp they grow is like three, four meters tall, and it's grown specifically to produce long fiber, uh, right. long fibers, and it's yeah. like almost zero THC content. But and the ones that I keep out in the herb garden are, uh, uh, yes, they're, they're the, the, the small, massively flowery kinds. But come due harvest time, we can still try bashing the stems and uh, extracting oh, the fibers yeah. from that. That sounds excellent. Yeah, it yeah. should work. And then I've got uh, uh, I've got bookworm leather for the for the on patches. Yeah, this is a great idea. Well, that's the rest of my week sorted. But for for today, what do we have in store for our readers this week? So today's book is uh, Roy Myers's Destiny and the Dolphins. The upper air world was a forest of danger. Yeah, and let me see here what the uh, uh, what the synopsis is. Ayurvedic space hippies think they found the perfect gig, unaware that they're being exploited by scheming planetary real estate developers and the very wildlife they think they're protecting. Mm, yes, it, well, it's it's a it's a good way to describe the book. A lot it's, better it's, than what it says on the on the on the cover, I yes, think. Like, like the, the, uh, the upper air world is a forest of dangers. Yeah. So it's probably good that we didn't really see that that was on the cover until just like now. just now. Yes, I mean the there upper air world is like you know it could be referring to the uh, to space in general, you know, which ah, is like. Yeah. Where the, where, which is where the major threats in the book come from. Well, yes. Uh, uh, one of the major threats. The story starts in Media Res, which I, which I always like. Mm-hmm. And we've had a few of these scenes that, that are always a highlight for me. It's a, a, a concert or a festival scene. And in this case, it was the Drowning Man Festival ah. uh, on, the, uh, uh, on, the, on the water planet of the imaginatively named Black Rock Planet. Strange name for, for a mostly water planet, but still... Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great festival. It's like they're trying to do this whole leave no trace behind thing, which is quite easy in the ocean because it just washes everything away. Yeah, everybody is so, uh, just wee-wee off the side. Uh, it's just uh, like, yeah, everybody comes with their little floaty things and they latch them all together in like a big floating city f- for a week or so and uh, during the festival. Yeah. And after that, it just breaks up again and everybody floats off in uh, their own way. Yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a spectacular, like there's so much art. No money, exchange of monies is allowed. Right, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a purely like non-transactional kind of civilization that they're, yeah. that they're trying. Out. Well, it's, it's, it's something that like, like, like stemmed out of when the planet was founded, after the space Mayflower uh, made its way to, uh, <laughs> uh, to Black Rock Planet. Yes. Which will, 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 I mean, the, the real planet is called uh, Sashruta, but not like, let, let's just call it Black Rock Planet. Uh, the, that's uh, easier to pronounce. Oh, no, Sashruta. That's, Sh- no, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, is that the is that the correct placement of the uh, uh, emphatic syllable? I have no idea. Is it Sushruta? Sushruta. Let's go with Sushruta. If the language is, if if like Hindi does that, it's Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Oh, I I, I had to I had to look up a little bit about Ayurveda because I know 
absolutely nothing about it, and I mm. think maybe Mr. Myers doesn't either. But clearly not. It's um, like he just sees it as a uh, as a hippie thing, yeah. and he just goes with it. It's one of the th- things in the book. It's like when the uh, one of the main characters, uh, I think, which is the one r- doing the dolphin ride, uh, the the guy up in front, uh, our hero Montgomery Thought. <laughs> yes, yes, of the New Hampshire Thoughts. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> whose family made it over on the Space Mayflower. Ah, oh, yeah, they landed at Plymouth, didn't they? Plymouth Splash. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, a, a case of rather poor steersmanship. Like, they had they had another destination in mind, but coordinates on, on the open ocean, once you're... It's, it's like, yeah, if you don't have anything to, to uh, draw a zero meridian from, it's Yeah, and, they'd, and they brought sextants and everything, but they don't know this planet's orbital mechanics. Yeah, there you go. And so and it's like, yeah, so they made it to the planet, and they, I mean, they, 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 being the Ayurvedians, they finally discovered that the reason that it doesn't work on Earth is because they didn't have the right herbs and medicines. Ah. And, and hence uh, their uh, trip to uh, yeah. Shashruta to uh, go and do their Ayurvedic thing there. It's like... Find the plants that they need to make their medicine work and, like, go for you. Ayurveda is a pseudoscience, protoscience, alternative yeah. medicine yes. uh, 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 system based on complex uh, uh, herbal compounds. Now, okay, uh, call me a little bit uh, uh, closed-minded, but generally when I hear uh, alternative medicine, I think, ah, so that's not medicine. Well, it's, you know what, what they call alternative medicine that works? Medicine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although, oh, what was that? Like Barnard's salve. It was a salve named after okay. someone. And it's this um, 13th century compound and it's, and it's very alchemical. Like you've got to mm-hmm. grind this up in a, in a, in a, uh, in a pewter basin and transfer it to a copper. And experimental uh, reproduction of the recipe exactly as stated did indeed have significant like oh. antimicrobial properties. But like using a, using a non brass container. It failed to work. Like, oh, that specific set that's, of... yeah, very peculiar. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the brass would probably work as a catalyst or some sort of re- reaction or the right, other. Right, exactly. It's like it one of those things that they before, just... before, but never, like, with precision. Yeah, yeah. So they just, like, did it in beakers and glasses, and, like, they tried to, like, mix the ingredients yeah. and get the... But, yeah, it turns out that the, the, the actual, the method was very important as well in the uh, Suggesting in the that this uh, uh, that this early uh, scientist, I mean, yeah, I think that's a fair thing to call him, mm-hmm. must have had some kind of uh, testing regimen to determine whether something was anti, yeah. anti-microbial or antibacterial or, or, yeah. or not. I mean, I don't know from when was this? Oh, like uh, High Middle Ages, so th- right. I want to say 13th century. Because, uh, like, I mean, the, the whole microbe thing wasn't like, like there was nothing. Oh, germ theory was, yeah, germ like, theories, almost like, industrial age. Yeah, it was like before that game, 1800s, major traction. So, yeah, yeah. And even then it was uh, controversial for until uh, Van Leeuwenhoek started mucking around with microscopes. Oh, is that yeah. when they, that's when, like... Oh, look, there they are. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like, oh, there is actually things in this, cl- in this clean water swimming around. Funny that. I wonder if they do anything. Ah, they can't. They're too small for that. It's like, well, <laughs> turns out. One of many contributions our country has made to the, uh, to the optical world, mm. um, not just in, in, like, telescopy. We had our own uh, uh, contributions. Ooh. Huygens, yeah. Huygens, yeah. Although he was a clockmaker, wasn't he? No, I think Huygens was the a telescope. telescope. Was okay. named after him. Yeah, it's probably telescope guy. A famous telescope chap, Huygens. Yes. Um, so Montgomery thought uh, Monty, please, Monty, as, Monty. He, as he requires right. insist, everyone to, insist yeah. to call himself. Yes, he is. Yeah, uh, he was an interesting character because he's one of the weekend warriors, a, a disparaging term for someone of wealth and position who wants to partake uh, of the experience and the, the the radical togetherness, man. Yes. of renting himself a nice ocean-going yacht, yacht and like hooking it up and just dingying in. Uh, uh, on the first day, doing no build-up and doing no uh, breakdown afterwards. Yep. But despite that, I mean, he he does Still. get into the spirit of things. Oh, yeah. Well, he does do the, well, the dolphin rides and everything. He he really communes with the dolphins. Mm, totally. So, uh, obviously, the, 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 the first dolphin that he... Um, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, the first dolphin that he uh, that he befriends is Ping Ping, and I saw parallels between uh, uh, between Monty and Ping Ping, and my own relationship with well, I should say now the uh, the little librarianess and Guinevere, sort of being adopted by uh, uh, by a member of another community and being uh, uh, and being invited into it, gaining a family basically. It's such a cool revelation to see to see Monty thought uh, uh, Monty to his friends, uh, uh, thought uh, to his enemies. <laughs> I go through that and that evolution from a a rather smug, sheltered, protected life to one where uh, he he feels privileged to be to be adopted, hmm. and you can you can understand why it it would be so attractive to him to immediately go. I mean, literally overboard, right? He well, yes. jumps among the. Uh, Pod of dolphins? Is yes, it a pod it's of a pod, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, a, a pod of dolphins where he, he, he also becomes friends with Echo. 
um, and a few other uh, unnamed Ah, dolphins. And so while these dolphin rides have been offered, like Mm -hmm. they're, you know, you make a few loops around uh, uh, this particular cluster of... Yeah, have them swim you underneath, like hook up your scuba gear and uh, dive down to see what's going on uh, near the bottom of the ocean at that point. Oh, wow. It's it's like they're they're in a pretty shallow part. Of the ocean. Yes, that's right. It's it's one of those shallow oceans. (laughs) Every ocean has its shoal. (laughs) Yeah, but isn't it called a sea at that point? Hmm. Not necessarily. No. I, mean, the, the, I don't know the, the difference. The, both the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean go right up against up, up to the coast. Also, they are the same body of water. They're just different areas of the same right. body of water. Fair so, enough. yeah. So if you if you like, yes, it goes up. But to it's the, not called the Virginia Sea or the like the California Sea. It's still the. Pacific Ocean no, at that have, point. We have like the the North Sea, yeah, right, and well, the Baltic Sea, and right. the Caspian Sea, yes. there, and they're and they're all essentially still the same uh, yeah. body of water. We just name them differently as they approach different geographic features. Well, yes, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a shallow part of the ocean when it's still called ocean. I mean, it would be tempting to whoever finds it to to name that, but it doesn't. They don't always do that. I mean, you've got the Arctic Sea and the Caribbean yes. Sea, and all the U.S. coastline in between that is directly up against the Atlantic Ocean. It's not called any sea there; it's the ocean. Well, given that, I think it would be only fair. To <laughs> <laughs> refer to you as the authority on... I'm by, I'm by no mean an oceanographer. Yeah, no, you are now. Uh, okay. Two of us. So, yeah, the uh, the festival takes its time, and the, like the as the sun dims and the lights of the the boats come on... The, oh, the, yeah, it's time for the spectacular... It, the, well, it's when the drug partying starts, yeah. and uh, the, uh, yeah, the pods go off to their uh, little uh, underwater, the pot growing uh, uh. Uh, thing uh, <laughs> to uh, bring in the harvest for the night. To, oh, yeah. And it's like they're not supposed the to absolute- sell we name Treasure Island. Yes. No, we're not supposed to sell well, it. Well, it's, it's underwater, so it's like so. It's a bit weird that they call it an island because it's like it's the underwater pot growing facility. Well, yeah, so they, but they engineered like, underwater it's a, pot. It's a, they call mm. the planet Black Rock. Like they're not. Yeah. They're not in it for the theme. No, this is very true. There's like they're, there's some sending some very mixed messages there, and of course on the way back to the drowning men uh, ships, they get accosted by the grass skirt fashion mafia, <laughs> as you can see. Like I think that's the scene <laughs> yes. that's being depicted on the uh, on the front of the <laughs> yeah. book. It's Monty on. Uh, 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 on Ping Ping, yeah. uh, being chased by the grass skirt fashion mafia, who's the, like, oh, those, those, that's not a grass skirt; those are palm fronds. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> yeah. We are not letting you get away with that. That's like so against this whole theme of the festival. What I also love is that he's wearing itty bitty, teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. So are his friends, uh, uh, who are also riding the riding the dolphins. Oh, and by the way, I keep forgetting to mention this, but uh, if you look down at your podcasting device, you should should be seeing the cover of today's book. And if not, check out the show notes for it image and a link. I don't know why I keep forgetting to, to mention mm. that. I, yeah, I hope that our readers have... Uh, uh, I'm sure they know by now. ...figured it out by now. Yeah. But yes, that's Brenda Corrigan yep. and Lord Tracy. Mm. They've got like this big bee in their bonnet about grass skirts and traditionalism, even though any tradition is made up, and especially on a new planet. Well, so uh, 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 Brenda and, and, and Lord are... They're what are known as sparkle ponies. No, no. Uh, alternative sparkle ponies. <laughs> Okay, no, you're right. I'm sorry. That's, that's how silly of me. They, it wasn't even mentioned that it was an alternate that they were alternatives to sparkle ponies. Because I mean, uh, Ray, you you know about this this tradition. Why are they Why are they named sparkle ponies? Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's a thing that they uh, that they like to associate themselves with. It's the long flowing locks and, and the glitter which hold. Yeah. I'm, I'm not quite sure how a sparkle pony gets mixed in with the. Um, the grass skirt mafia. Maybe kind of, uh, maybe that's where it originated. Like, so sparkle ponies, they're the, they're the fashionistas. They consider right. themselves the beautiful ones and they expect uh, things to be given to them without uh, contributing themselves. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense. Sparkle ponies being like a bit cliquish, you know? It's like, yeah. And especially like having a, a having derogatory a, term for those kinds of people who, who. Well, they can, like, they, they, they kind of wear it as a badge of honor. It's the thing that one side tries to call the other side to make it sound disparaging and the other side goes like oh yes we are the sparkle ponies in fact and like you're not so you can sparkle <laughs> yeah. off and uh, well they, I'm, I'm sure that they don't call themselves the grass skirt mafia but well yeah, no they, but that's 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 again that's one of the uh, like oh no it's the grass skirt mafia and yeah it's like and it's like the, the, you get don't call up. us that we are sparkle ponies because yeah you don't like because your your skirt like you're a guy and you're wearing like a skirt that only goes to halfway down your thigh but in fact, that's like it should, and just above the knee, and like the women should be, it should be the opposite oh. way around. And at this point, the book goes a little bit like, like there was a lot three, about three yeah. pages about that is a bit like okay, we get it. yeah, we, we we do get it. But I'm not, I, sure, I'm, I'm not sure what our uh, author's intent was there. Maybe he just had his own little fascination with uh, he just, grass I mean, skirts or sparkles. 
he, uh, I noticed this throughout the book that every now and again, uh, uh, Mr. Myers would just lose control, like would hyper focus on, on 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 something or whatever. And I can only imagine that his that his editor would have really tried to rein him Steer in. Steer him away from that. How, yeah. how, how furiously uh, Roy Myers must have must have defended it to, to to keep in these these extremely long digressions. In this case, about the the, the various length of uh, uh, skirts, yeah. In order to be called skirts versus kilts versus uh, yes, versus gowns and then of, versus and then. Of course, because it's the the fashionista mafia, they go on like like you can't oh, you can't just cut them to the right length. You have to use gr- grass blades of the right yeah, length to yeah. fashion the. Sh- uh, and these it's just extremely like, oh. prescriptivist. Yes. Uh, uh, whereas the whole idea is of of, of, of drowning man is a uh, 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 rugged like individualism and self reliance. What's it? What's it called? Radical self reliance. Radical self reliance, which is odd because for the, the impression that I more or less got from the book is that they're. Uh, their motto should have been "Make love, not peace." <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> um, because I mean, it does keep things exciting, and there is a certain. I mean, there, there, there is a, a lot of animosity going in this. <laughs> really is, but it's kind of it's kind of thrilling and cathartic as well. Maybe that's the whole point. Sort of like Fight Club. Yeah, it's like it's a bit like one of those. Uh, uh, what are they called again? The uh, fights. Purges, that's the one, like one of those purges. Oh, uh, yeah, after you, you've eaten way too much and then you feel... No, like, no, no, it's like when you, like the once a year you have like the day, the 24 hours in which everybody... Oh, yes, of course, I was, I was joking. Oh, course. sorry. <laughs> I, did, I did see those, uh, uh, those, those, those very good politically charged films. Uh, oh, actually, for, I was referring to the Rick and Morty episode about that, but... Oh, the planet, the purge planet, that's where the one, they yes. uh, try not to get purged. Yes, where uh, all crime, including murder, is legal for, for 12 hours, except for certain classes of weapons are still forbidden. But, oh, is it that? Oh, uh, is that in for? No idea. That's actually kind of a hmm, kind of a grim thought. The idea that uh, uh, a few more space years down the line, this drowning man uh, annual uh, will become a lot festival, more literal. They do have the uh, uh, the great ceremony at the end where uh, they've built a, a giant effigy out of uh, flotsam and jetsam. Which one's which again? Oh, uh, there's a third flotsam, one actually. Uh-huh. Yeah, and um, uh, derelict. Yes. Yeah. So one of them's. Uh, derelict one is the stuff, isn't I think? Uh, loads and has been an. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, it's also like Jetsum is washed. Jetsum is washed up on the beach. Yeah, flotsam floats around, and, and derelict has sunk. Yes, uh, usually so. because it was stuff that was thrown overboard yes, to uh, lighten the loads. Mm, the other way around. No, lagan, that's, lagan, yes. that's the one. Because lagan is not necessarily uh, uh, permitted to be claimed by whoever finds yes. it, because it is it is presumed that the owner still knows where it is. Yeah. Uh, and has a, and has a standing claim to return for it. Usually, like marked with a buoy. Or- like this is mine. I just have to like leave it here for a bit. Sort of like uh, uh, Han Solo did in Star Wars with the spice. With the spice. Yeah. He, he never did go back for it, though, did he? No, but like the whole Maw thing was a bit of a weird uh, place, anyway. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, they built the they built the whole statue, and at the end of the festival, they sink it off, and uh, to add like presumably to a huge pile of those things underneath the underneath the water down there. Yeah, kind of an anticlimactic like. You'd expect this this moment that they've been building up to. And it was this huge ceremony, and everyone's gathering around and just cheering and cheering. And it's supposed to be this 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 release of emotion. But I mean, it just fucking <laughs> sinks. It just <laughs> clink, yeah. And it's and there's a splash. It does this Titanic thing. I think it's like big holes at the top, so it just kind of like takes yeah. some water in the bottom. They open the hatches, and it just kind of goes loop. Yep, and it's and it's gone. And yep. then everyone has to has to clear out. Yep, and they're yeah. supposed to all leave. You know, leave no trace behind. Mm. As you mentioned. Pretty easy because everybody just dumps all their trash overboard, and, and the ocean takes care of it. It's not very ecologically sound. No, maybe. Well, I mean, like, the, I guess that's why the dolphins are so pissed about it because they have to like take care of that all that crap that ends up in their pot guard. I mean, was it just me, or were the were the dolphins really racist? I mean, their whole thing once 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 Monty thought could. I just got why you called it, why he was called Montgomery Thought, and that is a very good joke. I just got that. <laughs> So the only people they permitted to to ride them after uh, uh, the Drowning Man Festival ended, they all had black hair. You can see that on the cover. Oh. Like, as we discovered more of their of their of their habits, like they were extremely aggressive toward whales and porpoises yes. and, and orcas. Uh, they absolutely did not mingle. I mean, the, the the dolphins had much more in common, I think, with the grass skirt uh, mafia. Mafia. You hate what's most like yourself, I suppose. It's like they. Yeah, like the smallest like, variation set them yeah, off. Yeah, the deviation, like yeah. Their idea of harmony was was very prescriptivist. The dolphins didn't care much for being part of the sparkle ponies. Yeah, the little schism here is like, oh no, we don't, we want our skirts below the <laughs> knee rather than above, and that's yeah. enough for like schisming the church. It's like almost like Dutch Protestants. 
We've had our fair share of uh, uh, ecclesiastic oh, schisms yes. here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We? Well, yeah. you, know, you know what the saying is. One Protestant is a faithful, two is a congregation, three is a schism. Oh, <laughs> that's, I think that's a little unkind to our, our Protestant readers at home whom we, <laughs> who we, who we value and appreciate. Good Lord. <laughs> um, so after, after like the Drowning Man uh, crowd, including most of the weekend warriors, clear out, mm-hmm. yeah, our Monty Scott stays behind and has a, has a bit of a beach sesh yep. with, uh, uh, with some of his friends, uh, uh, namely uh, uh, Jeff Stryker is one of the chaps who stays yes. behind, and Peter North, they're also friends of his. Uh, and, oh, yes, and his two other friends, Ron and Jeremy. Oh, well, yeah. yes. It's a pretty big crowd, and, like, they help the dolphins with the, with, the, with the pot farming. I mean, like, dolphins are good for, like... Uh, guarding the area and running the business, but like you know, no opposable thumbs. No, so that's a real need, limitation. Yeah, you need someone to do the pruning and the harvesting, and that's where the humans come in. Yeah, they come in handy. Ah, uh, uh, very uh, good. And it's a very, it's a very fruitful relationship that yeah. they've uh, uh, that they've got with these uh, with these dolphins, who, uh, despite not having opposable thumbs, do have certain tastes that they can't usually indulge mm. in. So having this uh, uh, this active trade, because our weekend warriors here. Uh, sell that pot from their uh, um, from their Falcon Studio mm. on uh, Bellamy Beach. The alternative Falcon the Studio. Alternative. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see you writing. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing as cheating in improv. But this is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this, this, of course, this idyllic uh, situation can't continue for very long because that's not that's not uh, that's uh, not, dr- no, that's, that's not drama. No. Uh, so this is where Colt C O L T, the uh, Interplanetary Real Estate yes. uh, Agency, arrives. They they, uh, they bring in the nuclear attack turtles. Yeah, to in the, the, yeah, that was like a sudden escalation. List of the things. I, mean, I think that's what the the thing on the cover of the book is like. The, the above space world is dangerous, and we're like, uh, well, yeah. yeah, if you get Colt coming with their nuclear attack turtles, trying to like undermine the uh, pot pot growing business. It, it's kind of cool that something so altruistic and, and 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 optimistic can grow out of a festival like Drowning Man, which yeah. has become more and more violent as it's uh, as it's yeah, progressed. Well, you know, there's, like, there's like a lot of uh, I mean, there's a few scenes in the book where they, 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 they and like yeah, of course the the the, the, the sparkle ponies throw in with uh, with the cult folks to uh, get rid of their uh, rivals. They have their sights set on well designed beachfront property. Which is kind of weird because, like, there's not that much beach property here. It's like mostly wa- water world, yeah, and everybody right. has a boat anyway. So, like, okay, <laughs> sometimes you just have to go with what the book tells you. No, are the absolutely are the these are like, the parameters, and like we're going to go for this, yeah. Yeah, well, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, I mean, wow. it, we're sure having fun reading this. Oh right? yeah, absolutely, it was a great book. It was a <laughs> yeah. good read. So the nuclear attack turtles. I mean, I felt bad for these for these poor creatures because why are they equipped with nuclear reactors? I mean, they're they're living, right? The the yeah, nuclear yeah, reactor absolutely. is to, to provide additional thrust. Yeah, I thought it's more like those like uh, those, those those nuclear missiles that they build. And, like, and when I say nuclear missiles, I not I mean not I don't mean nuclear tip missiles, but the ones that were like nuclear powered. Oh, uh, so. How how does that work? You run the reactor hot and then you and yeah. steam? Or? Just air, basically. You just use the reactor to heat up the air and use that for thrust. Oh, is and that it, enough? Uh, yeah, if you run it hot enough, that's no problem. Hmm. Problem is, it's like ridiculously polluting. And Gosh, I wonder why. Yeah, it, it was designed as one of those, they, in, instead of keeping bombers in the air 24-7, they figured that uh, they put a few of those things flying circles and if need be, they just give them the command to head into oh. enemy territory and then I think they actually had some bombs on them and they could drop them off and then they just like keep Flying low-level circles above wow. the uh, uh, above the enemy territory, just polluting the place with their exhaust. Oh no! Yeah, oh. Uh, it was not exactly a very pleasant comp to, but that's I think that's what the nuclear attack turtles are meant to. Uh, yeah, because they are uh, also be. like yeah. viciously polluting, and the and the I mean the the the, the, the poor animals. Uh, on the one hand, you kind of feel sympathy for them. On the other hand, as soon as they found out that they were uh, being used against the the, the racist dolphins, mm. like they seem to be kind of okay with it. Like, yeah, that's like they're, they're fine. Not like, a very like, popular species on this no, water on this water planet. Like, they're this, kind of dickheads. They are, but they, I mean, they come off rather pleasant at, at the beginning. In the polite. beginning, yeah, there's a, there's polite, a, there's yeah, a difference true. there. This is true. I mean, they they're, they're charming enough, I suppose. I mean, they they do it for Monty. Uh, oh yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, like it, it, at, towards the end of the book, it makes you wonder who the good guys and who the bad guys really right? are. I think Monty and his and his fun bunch, like they seem to be, at the, like they seem to be innocents. 
No, that's right. interesting. I mean, like, yeah, Monty is like he's just a rich boy yeah. who's been thrown into this thing. Uh, so yeah, they 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 form a bit of a beachhead on uh, on Bellamy Beach, and they uh, yeah. uh, uh, they board up their Falcon Studio, they hole up to to defend themselves, and it's sort of like squatters. I mean, that is essentially what they are, right? Squatters well, yes. on uh, uh, because uh, because Colts they have the D to the place. Oh, yeah, uh. so many real estate puns. We have a right to this, indeed. Yes, mm. no All deed was, goes unpunished. No, Indeed, it was it was just endless and oh yes I don't know maybe he just had a thing for realtors it, it, it it's a bit of a strange ending where it goes into like the it seems to be a strange ending doesn't it I mean things things are not going very well for uh, uh for Monty Thought and his and his fun bunch of boys Echo they, and Ping Ping yeah they they have to make their escape because their their pot farm gets polluted by the nuclear attack turtles who are circling the place and again like the ocean currents take away this mess but it, it's yeah, still, still the plants it, are not doing very well and uh, you know I, th- I think that like the Bellamy Beach is where the uh, next uh, installment of The Drowning Man is going to be held. I can't imagine what kind of video that would be. Oh, hmm. Let's have a long think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in my bunk. So the, we, we think all is lost. Like, the Falcon Studio has been uh, uh, has been abandoned. It's D-Day on Bellamy Beach. <laughs> the underwater pod pod. And they have to they have to climb on the, uh, Echo and Ping Ping and the other unnamed dolphins. And, and ride off into the sun. And oh. beat an escape. And we think yeah. that's going to be the last that we've seen of our heroes. And the... Uh, 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 the evil realtors have uh, uh, have won, um, but it's uh, uh, I think Jeff Stryker or maybe it's Peter North or uh, maybe it's Ron or or, mm-hmm. or Jeremy who notices as they're as they're making their escape the there is something poking out over the horizon something mm. that uh, 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 none of them had seen before Dawn of a new light yeah and it is mm. the the gleam of the wreckage of the space Mayflower once thought lost, lost now found which has the original D to Sushruta thus invalidating the claim that Colt have and over it. not only that they also have the uh, uh, the, the 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 recipes for the alternative space medicine, which is like the thing that brought <laughs> yeah. them to uh, I was to Black Rock pl- to get back. <laughs> Black Rock <laughs> Planets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with, where the uh, underwater pot turns out to be a miraculous healing agent. It's a it's a disinfectant. As long as it's treated in the correct way and prepared and not just smoked. But uh... well, no, you can do both. That's the great thing. It's well, sort of yeah. like when I was younger, I I planned to make an invention, which is kind of imagining like what if I had invented this? And yes. it was uh, uh, I think I proudly told you about it when we were ah, younger. yes, the bastard beer. Bastard beer, yes. And it was going to be this substance that was. Just barely drinkable as and, and and mildly alcoholic, but it was also mildly detergent. So you, you could, could use it as a shampoo, or you could use it to scrub your dishes. Yes, uh, yeah, or or to, to toilet, wash your clean bike the toilet. With it. Yeah, or yeah. and or just or just chunk some. And it wasn't great at anything, but it could still do everything. So you only needed that one thing. You only, and, yeah, uh, ultimate bachelor uh, right? tool. It's only the only thing you need in the kitchen sink, or or the fridge for that matter. Uh, yeah, this crew of uh, uh, hunky bachelors that uh, uh, Monty thought has surrounded himself with yes. probably really enjoy. It, it did turn a bit homoerotic at the end, didn't it? Yeah, but that's all right, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, they were, they were just I'm having fun. Fun. It's just like, it just it was, again, one of those hyper-focused turns that uh, yes, our dear author... Yes, the volleyball author, scene. It's was like, kind of weird. Where did that come from? Yes. <laughs> no, I, I kind of appreciate it, but, I mean, when it happened in Top Gun, that was a bit of all right. Playing with the boys, yeah. Playing with the boys, yeah. That's when uh, that's when young, impressionable khaki sort of sat up straight and had all these feelings that he didn't know what to do with for, <laughs> well, for a little while. Uh, but uh, um, Val Kilmer. I was, a, I was a Tom Cruise guy. <laughs> little did we know. But um, that doesn't translate very well to literature, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and, and then Jeff Stryker punted and uh, uh, Ron and Jeremy and reposted. They did the and, slap thingy. And it's yeah, like, Peter, uh, Peter, Peter North Dink- oh. spanked him off. Or yes, it was, yes, uh, yes. That was like, again, he's like, he shows great enthusiasm in writing about these topics, but not much in the way of in-depth research no no but it was it was very comprehensive like that was that was three or four hours of volleyball condensed mm. into into 10 pages of yes i mean very comprehensible it's like it's it like i mean like you can almost imagine that he was writing for a movie script you know it's like this is like the the final ah, scene yeah. it's like the fade out scene like the, the zoom out and then the beach and then very very descriptive but versus the oh i forget which uh, which famous film it was it was from but in the script um they're known as the most expensive words in, in Hollywood history, mm-hmm. uh, where the script at one point says, 
and the Indians take the fort. And it's like a 20-minute uh. battle scene <laughs> <laughs> encapsulated by, and the Indians take the fort. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit lazy script writing, I suppose. Those of us who have dabbled prefer to call it economy. Uh, economy I is suppose. what we call it. It's like when they had the Star Trek scripts and they just like put in techno babble. Yes, well, they had they had dedicated specialists for uh, that. You, you wouldn't think it, but apparently they did. Well, to, 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 uh. to, keep, their, to keep their rubbish techno babble uh, con- internally, consistent, internally consistent, if yes. not scientifically consistent. Because, yeah. hey, future science. Mm, absolutely. So things have turned out pretty okay for our crew. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a not exactly a happy end, but at least a pleasant one, I suppose. Uh, although it does rely on that on that weird, like, property is nine-tenths of the law thing. Yes. Where, uh, if someone physically holds the deed, now they own the planet uh, Sushruta. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the original It's, it's the original paperwork. Uh, yeah, is it really that whoever the, the, the cult holds guys? It? Well, the cult guys, they, they, they filed new paperwork, you know? They said, yeah, like, which okay, is there's, validated. Yeah, sure. there's, no, there's no claim to this, so yeah. like, you just have to be able to show it's the original claim. Planet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there we go. Yeah. And, we're, and we're, we're claiming it. And it's like suddenly they show up with the paperwork and they go like, oh, no, here it is. This so is it was lagging. Yeah, it turns out it's ours anyway. And, like, at least, you know, the Drowning Man Festival can be held again the year after. Uh, I thought it was quite big that the, the Sparkle Ponies were still invited to yes, uh, to return. Des- despite the racist uh, dolphins. Yeah, that was... The, the whole thing about Drowning Man is that it should be inclusive, but there yes. is the, the paradox of tolerating the intolerant. Yes. Uh, that I'm sure is going to bite them in the ass. There's no sequel to the book, so we'll never find out. Well, there is there is a healthy amount of fan fiction. Like, everybody well, wants to find out what, uh, uh, what Jeff Stryker and uh, uh, Brent the Corrigan eventually uh, end up to on the on yeah. the Bellamy Beach. Yes, well, so, so yes, yeah. <laughs> Say, yeah. Here comes the question that you that you've been waiting for. <laughs> How are we going to rate this book? Oh, um, so it's got to be like nautical or oh yes. I was going to say how many knots we're going to give it, but oh, that's, that's like... a good one. That's really appropriate. Yeah. Yes. So well, what's it's not, a... not really Falcon Studios thing knots, but <laughs> <laughs> what's a good. Um, uh, yeah, what's a what's a good maritime number? Oh, I mean, geez. okay, so a knot is a, a, a is speed, right? Yes, it's a measurement it's of speed. One, one nautical mile. Per, I know. How is that measured? Like, I, I understand that there were knots in a rope. Exactly. You yeah, the... you, you throw a bucket behind the uh, boat. Oh, because uh, the bucket serves as an anchor. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, a, and it pulls the rope. And and the, the, the line just spools off without any discernible resistance. And then you know then how you much count, distance count you. Up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Like, what's okay? Then what's fast? I have no idea. It depends because on the ship. It's like you know, whatever's it's, fast. This was not it. Nine this knots was... is like fast for a sailing boat, but it's like nothing for like a warship. <laughs> we always do this. We, <laughs> why do we? We we find these weird dimensions to <laughs> to make up how we're going to rate a book. So let's give it. The... Oh, how many leagues? out of 20,000. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Some of it was under the sea, even. I mean, I was uh, I was entertained. I'll give it 17,385. I knew you were going to do 17,000. I could have written it <laughs> on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope and handed it to you. That's not a, that's not a bad rating for a, uh, for for a, a book, book like this. No, yeah. absolutely. And oh, and speaking of ratings, hey, hey, uh, we love being your dirty little secret, but maybe tell a friend, and that maybe that friend is iTunes. Although I understand that iTunes is not going to be around for very much long; it's going to be split Ooh. up into uh, uh, Apple Music and Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah, I guess we're going to be on Apple Podcasts then. Yeah, where we would also appreciate uh, uh, a uh, review. We'd also just love to hear from you. We are uh, at Cover My Ass Cast on Twitter, uh, also on Facebook, and Cover My Ass Cast at Gmail dot com. Where oh yes, we have a handy dandy form on the on the web page, Cover My Ass cast.com uh, where you can submit suggestions for for future books we uh, uh, will review every suggestion that comes in we welcome them and uh, uh, obviously the cover has to be great uh, yes and it has to be inspiring so we we do hope to hear from all of our uh, readers at home but in the meantime until we get these uh, uh, suggestions what do we have in store for our readers right. next week next week we will be reviewing the Vondage manuscript oh yes so let's definitely do that one and see how much more incomprehensible it is than, uh, than our usual than our usual fare and that about well, covers it. Thank you for joining us at Cover My Ass, where baffling books are reviewed but not read by yours truly. My name is Kaki. And I'm Kay. And remember, we, we only, only judge a book by its cover. cover. Well, in the case of the Voynich manuscript, we really just don't have a choice. Well, we, we yes. couldn't possibly read it. No, exactly. Well, well, there's, there's some pictures of it.